Good evening, everyone. Hope you are doing great. Thank you for attending 12th part of HU LADAM webinars in which we are going to introduce Harris Beck University, its available resources and the research that is going on on university. My name is Ruzbe Sedikian and I am an associate professor of data analytics at Harris Beck University and I have the honor to be the host of these sessions. Harris Beck University is a private STEM focused university in Harris Beck, Pennsylvania with an additional location in Philadelphia. HU has more than 30 programs in undergrad, grad and PhD level. We have over 6,000 students who are represented in 110 countries. HU LATAM, the term that we use for our branch in Latin America, is offering right now data analytics and soon project management and cybersecurity, which will be delivered in hybrid format, which means it's going to be online and on campus classes. And these classes are going to be taught by professors from Harris Beck University of Science and Technology in the United States. We are proud to have our latest location in City of Knowledge in Panama. The HU Panama location will also offer cutting edge professional development seminars and courses. And I have this good news for you that the first cohort, the first few cohorts of the students, uh, we're going to offer a scholarship to them too. If you have missed our past webinars, don't be worried about it. They are all uploaded on YouTube and you can watch them whenever you like. Um, during the talk, if you have any questions, feel free to type your question in the chat box and I will get back to you as soon as is possible. Please follow these links to get more information about Harris Beck University location in Panama, plus watching the former uh, presentations that we have had. So without any further talk, let's move to our presenters and the first one, which is John M. Clark, Dr. Clark graduated from Mount St. Mary's University, magna cum laude, with a Bachelor of Science in Business and Master of Science in Business from Johns Hopkins University. In April 2021, he earned his PhD in Business Management with, the, with a specialization in Project Management from Capella University. His doctoral dissertation was a correlation study on the extent of project management competencies and project complexity on project success. Dr. Clark is a member of Delta Mu Delta through uh, Johns Hopkins University and the National Honor Society of Leadership and Success through Capella University. He has a passion for teaching and guiding others and sharing personal work experience and new knowledge gained through his doctoral research. Dr. Clark is also a certified project management professional PMP, a, cert a certified government chief information officer, CGCIO, and a Six Sigma Green Belt. Dr. Clark has over 20 years of experience as a management consultant, project management director, chief of staff, and chief information officer. He has extensive experience in both the public and private sectors in the field of project management, information technology, uh, procurement, and budgeting. Since 2019, Dr. Clark teaches project management and thesis courses at Harris Beck University. He also teaches at Post University, Ferris State University, and Elizabethtown College. Dr. Clark, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, do you want me to uh, start now, or are you going to uh, first introduce uh, Professor Ella as well? Uh, no, you start then. Uh, okay. Let's see. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. So, uh, good evening, class. Uh, let me. Um, so I pulled my, uh, my slides here. Just want to share with you some of uh, really some of my thoughts and and also what I think are some of the the relevant themes that are stemming from my my doctoral research from from last year actually. And you can see, first of all, the uh, the title of of tonight's presentation is what's known as the the managing on the edge of chaos. And this idea about the edge of chaos is what's important and. This is what I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about. First of all, what is it? What is this edge of chaos? And then more importantly, how can we begin to seize the opportunities as project managers in this edge of chaos as well? So I just want everybody just to kind of 
sit back for a second and imagine that you're standing in front of a pool of water, maybe in the one that's uh, depicted in this this uh, this image here. Right. Think about the the uh, the stability of the water. Now think about it that you are taking a pebble and you're going to throw that pebble into the pool of water. What's going to happen? Oh, most of you are going to be thinking, well, it's going to create then some type of ripples. All right. Those ripples are what are known essentially as disruptions. And think about what's happening to that stable pattern, stable pattern that was the pool of water. Well, now it's being disrupted itself and waves are being uh, uh, emanated from where that center of that disruption occurred with that, that simple pebble. And think what also happens with those waves over time. Those waves begin to dissipate. And eventually what happens as well is that you enter into a new and stable pool of water. And this is what I've just described as an analogy of both complexity and also then this idea about the edge of chaos. So complexity or for what really I studied being project complexity. The pool of water is actually representing a system, uh, an open system. We ourselves are each open systems. An open system is a system in which it's affected by internal and external forces, and it's also then affecting internal and external forces of other systems as well. We even have systems within us as well. And the same with the, with, the, with the pool of water. But in this case, the system we're talking about is that stable pool of water. And when we throw that pebble into the pool of water, it's creating a disruption. How's it doing that? Well, it's creating some type of tension into the system itself. And the system as a result becomes then Perhaps some people call it chaotic. But then also what happens is that that over time, those waves begin to dissipate and it enters into a new and stable pattern as well. And this is what is actually complexity. And you're gonna, I'll describe a little more as we go through this, but what is really the difference between chaos and also complexity? But what's important for our, our, our conversation tonight is that the idea about complexity. First of all, complexity is associated then with uncertainty. It's also associated with ambiguity. And you're going to see here that this is something that, and there's evidence to support this, that the idea about projects becoming more complex is becoming more and more of a, of a reality. Complexity is continuing to increase. But what is happening also is that we can begin to see some of the opportunities as a system or like with a pool of water are in that state of chaos being complex, but they're also going to revert back into an, a new and stable pattern. And that's what we call the edge of chaos. So you're getting this idea or perhaps the benefits and the opportunities that are possibly available in a complex system that's even suffering through some type of disruption and that there are benefits and you're going to see here there are benefits to the project manager and to the project and the project team as well that can be seized so that you are then benefiting from the potential that is going to be offered to you through that edge of chaos and this is kind of dovetailing what you're saying before. Yeah, again, projects are becoming increasingly complex. And what was interesting, back 20, already said, he had already declared that the 21st century is going to be the century of complexity. And let me just give you a little bit of understanding also about what is this idea about complexity. So, and some of this actually stems back to what was really the motivation for my doctoral research. One of the uh, the first courses that I had actually taken <coughs> excuse me, in my uh, my doctoral journey was a class called the the images of the organization. 
it was my first exposure to systems, systems thinking. But then also, as we start to talk about then how this applies to the project, became obvious that in a project, complexity is becoming a, 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 uh, an increasingly significant force in how we are beginning to manage and also treat projects. And why is that the case? Well, complexity in a project, first of all, like I was saying before, is dealing with uncertainty and ambiguity. It's also dealing with these hidden and invisible forces. Some of these hidden or invisible forces, which lead then to an uncertainty, ambiguity, and also randomness, they're caused then by actually us. We, the people that are working on the projects, or perhaps we're external stakeholders to the project. We have our own interpretations, perhaps of the expectations of the project, the constraints on the project. Maybe we have also certain types of other agendas on the purpose of the project. And these misinterpretations or perhaps different ways of treating and examining and treating the project itself, that's what leads then, or at least is one source of then uncertainty and ambiguity. Now, remember what I also said, particularly with that, that analogy of the, the, the stable pool of water. That what's important when we start thinking about complexity is that it eventually reverts back to a new and stable pattern. And we've seen this uh, when when I was uh, just learning more about complexity, I always would describe the events of 9-11 as an example, as a, as a perfect example actually of complexity, how it happened and also then the, the hidden and invisible connections, interdependencies that occurred, right? it was impossible to actually identify those, to predict all of those, those connections prior to actually 9-11. What's more important is think about what also happened. 9-11 was a disruption, certainly, and it caused us to enter into what sometimes we now call a new normal which we also see with COVID-19. I'll get to that in a second. But when with 9-11 occurred, it, it, it caused us uh, to begin to behave and to accept certain types of rules and expectations that were completely foreign prior to 9-11. So we entered into a new and stable pattern. So it has two of those properties, which we see in complex systems, that there's going to be some type of tensions, invisible hidden forces, that lead to then some type of a disruption, and that the disruption is going to lead to some type of a new stability, a new norm. COVID-19 is another example. So as I talk now more about complexity and project complexity, I actually couple both of those together. And, and think about what happened with COVID-19. I was even thinking about this and reflecting on this last night. Because what is one of the themes I'm talking, I'm trying to get across today. Remember this idea about managing the edge of chaos and also starting to garner some of the potential opportunities and benefits that are available to us by managing the edge of chaos. So what happened in COVID-19? Certainly it, it and we entered into, and I think we're still in the process of emerging into this, into a new and stable pattern. But recall what happened it at even the, uh, during the, the peak of the pandemic, there was no vaccine. How did we get the vaccine? Well, it seems that there was significant and tremendous types of research and work and collaboration that was done by scientists on a global scale to actually identify a way or actually multiple ways to begin to treat the, uh, the, the, the epidemic itself, the pandemic. And that's what I'm talking about when we started to discuss and think about seizing those benefits by managing the edge of chaos. They did that. The scientists did that. When you as an individual or maybe a project manager or even a project team member, as you are experiencing complexity, one way to handle the complexity is to 
step up to the cause. Become more flexible, adapt, learn, even learn from your mistakes as well. And I am not anybody's uh, an expert in in uh, epi epidemiology or in creating vaccines, but I'm sure that there was a significant amount of learning and adapting that was taking place in developing then those those vaccines. And this is what I'm talking about is then those benefits that would be then potential to us as project managers and project team members by managing the edge of chaos. But what I think is also important is how do we do this? Just a little more about than with uh, with complexity. Some of the other reasons why <coughs> we see projects becoming more and more complex. Some of the same themes we see in other areas of study in the field of project management, globalization, virtualization. I also think personally that with the advancements in technology, particularly from an IT perspective, it in itself also creates, creates then additional complexity. Certainly it's a, a mechanism to help, uh, help us as project managers, helps us into contacting and engaging with our customers, but it also then creates then further types of opportunities for ambiguity and also then misinterpretation as well. That's what I also mean by this idea about the human dimension as well. So through goal globalization, even through integration with multiple cultures. Think about with some of our globalized and virtualized projects. They're going to be involving then multiple team members in different parts of the world, different time zones, and also from different cultures as well. This adds further ambiguity and uncertainty then to the project itself. So there are many factors actually that are contributing then to this idea about complexity. I also had mentioned here, it's interesting that we call what I'm describing as this uh, this uh, area for opportunity as the edge of chaos. But this idea about chaos is actually something that is actually very different from complexity. Certainly one of the, the aspects of, uh, or one of the differences between complexity and chaos is this idea about entering into a new a stable pattern or environment, a new norm. A chaotic system doesn't do that. Sometimes by managing the edge of chaos, we can actually then begin to contribute and also manage and cope with the complexity such that then we can also not just see some of the benefits from managing the edge of chaos, but we can also then contribute to then helping it enter, meaning the system, the project as a system, enter into a new and stable pattern, maybe even more quickly. There's also this idea about deterministic and non-deterministic. So this is, this is relevant, particularly in the field of project management. Uh, many of the, if you think about it, many of the, the approaches, many of the, the, uh, the tools that are available in the field of project management they're based then on a deterministic type of a perspective, meaning that your ways of that would work well in the past, they're going to work well or perhaps similarly well in the future. A non-deterministic type of a behavior, it actually negates that. It actually says that just because it was effective or worked well in the past does not mean any type of guarantee or any type of degree of certainty that it's going to work well in the future. As a matter of fact, what, what, what may work better is something that's completely different, right? Complexity in the system being complex is a non-deterministic type of a system. So when we start thinking about some of our traditional approaches to project management, more of what they even call in PMBOK now, our predictive types of project management methodologies, they are based then on a deterministic type of methodology or understanding, which is, it challenges then what really projects are becoming. They're becoming non-deterministic. In terms of then the project, we as project managers must also become then what I'm saying here in the next point, we must also behave 
as complex systems of ourselves. Some of the, the literature that I had uh, uh, become engrossed in, in beginning to have a further or deeper understanding of complexity in my in developing my thesis, it began to describe that complexity or the project, just the project itself being complex, it is a complex adaptive system, meaning that it is always evolving, it's morphing. Why is it doing that? Well, it goes back to some of those hidden and invisible forces of the project. Maybe some of the randomness that is then it's invisible to us as project managers, it actually causes the project to adapt and to morph, to change. And as a result, the only way that we as project managers and project team members are have the ability then to cope with and to manage, to manage the edge of chaos is to behave like complex adaptive systems ourselves. And that's what I want to talk to you about. So part of my 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 uh, my doctoral research was certainly investigating project complexity. But the other part of it was investigating how do project management competencies, how do those work together in complex projects? Some of this was based on some of the, the, the literature that I had uh, uh, investigated as part of understanding what are these these concepts and also how do we even measure project complexity? There were, there were particular articles <coughs> written by by uh, two of the, the most influential uh, researchers and authors in uh, in my research from uh, Dr. Mailer and Dr. Turner, and they have suggested in some of their their uh, their writings that it's important for us to actually investigate how do project manager competencies, how do they interrelate? What is their correlation then with complex projects in delivering then perhaps projects being successful? That is what became then the, the emphasis and the center of my doctoral research. Let me give you a little bit of a background also, what are these project management competencies? What I have here actually, uh, what I'm describing here is the model that was used, uh, that I used to measure project management competencies. Project management competencies, the, the, the simplest way to, to understand what they are at a very basic level is that they're like I even have here, best practices and proven skills. Think about the, the uh, some, some of the, the tactics, some of the, the approaches, some of the behaviors that are recommended in the field of project management. Those are, they could be encapsulated into this idea about project management competencies. The, the competencies themselves that I had investigated, and again, these were defined by the instrument that I used in my doctoral research to measure the level of project managers exhibiting or using these project management competencies were team commitment, team management, business domain knowledge, project management being tactical, people skills, and also professionalism. I'm going to give you a little bit more understanding what each of these are because I think this is relevant to what we're going to be talking about in the next couple of slides as well. There, there are, one of the things that before I do that though is I want to say that this is just one way to look at project management competencies. If you would have the opportunity to even do some research on what are project management competencies, you will find there are other ways to not just to define what project management competencies are, but also what are the elements of project management competencies. So this is not definitive in this way, but this is the way that I use to then measure then project management competencies in my doctoral research. Now, now just give it a little bit of understanding what are these, these elements. Team commitment. The, the project manager has to have the ability to inspire and to motivate the team also to build the team. This is something that is emphasized particularly in Pinbox 7, and I'll get to that in a few minutes. Team management. So in addition to in motivating the team, the product manager must also have the ability then to lead the team as well. Business domain knowledge. 
that's pertaining then to the the processes, the uh, the, uh, the, the the policies, the rules, the the subject matter that is resident then in the organization in which the project is residing in. Project management, the tactical skills. These are those fundamental skills dealing with at a minimum the triple constraints, our budgeting, our scheduling, and also then our our scope, our scope management. I also sometimes include in there then our quality management as part of that. These are our basic fundamental project management skills, also tactical skills. And then an area which I also think is growing in importance and then our people skills or our communication skills. Some also categorize these as being the interpersonal skills. I'm going to describe these in a little more detail and also how these in particular are how we can begin to then seize the opportunities available to us in managing that edge of chaos. And then the last one here that uh, I think is also important is professionalism. Meaning that the project manager is exhibiting then the the ethical behavior that is then supported by the uh, the project management field, the project management institute itself, and also that the project manager is exhibiting uh, through experience and also then in just the overall portrayal and behavior as a project manager, a sense of credibility. And also dependability. These are all components that are a part of professionalism. And actually, what is interesting, this is something where I'm seeing some of my research going forward in the future is that professionalism and also team commitment have particular influence on some of these other dimensions of project management competencies. But that that's going to be for future research. So I don't have much to talk about at this point in time. What I do want to talk about though is Again, just to give you a little bit of a snapshot. Okay, what was this with my doctoral research? What was I actually investigating? This is simply showing us the relational model that I was using to actually investigate the, uh, th this, this phenomenon. Meaning that I had two independent variables, project management competencies and project complexity. And I was trying to see from looking at investigating, not just the the overall model, but also what was the correlation of each of these variables to then project success itself? It led to two questions you can see, two research questions. Do project management competencies predict project success? And does project complexity predict project success? Now, I did something which is known as multiple linear, linear regression, and we're, we're not going to go into a lot of detail with what that it means tonight, but what that what it did do is it created then a model which actually integrated considering both project management competencies and the degree or level of project complexity and then seeing if that model could actually be a way then to predict project success. And the results here show that. Uh, the key number for our purposes is this p-value. So typically a p-value which is less than 0.05 is indicating that the model itself is demonstrating some type of a statistically significant effect. You can see that ours for this, this research was showing a p-value which was less than 0 0.001. And so it was clearly showing that there's a statistically significant effect from the model. And what is the model? The model is involving project management competencies and project complexity and when you're using both project management competencies in complex projects, you are then actually predicting through this model the, a, a greater likelihood of realizing project success in your project itself. And that is what's supporting then this idea about managing edge of chaos. So the, the results definitely show, yes, we, we have the ability to perhaps tap into the potential of managing the edge of chaos, but that doesn't answer the question, how do we do it? That's what I want to talk to you about. So remember what I was saying before, that we as project managers, as members of a project team, 
we have to also behave akin to a complex adaptive system. The project itself is already a complex adaptive system. For us to gather the benefits from the edge of chaos, we also have to behave as a complex adaptive system. And what my research is showing, if you think about it, is that by using project management competencies, we can then begin to manage an edge of chaos. And why is that the case? Think about some of the those those project management competencies I was talking about, particularly those dealing with then um, motivation, leadership, communication, interpersonal skills. What's happening is that the project manager is creating an environment which is both adaptive, but also then a learning type of an environment. Also, it's collaborative. There's partnerships that are being um, formed. Because you're doing that, because you're establishing that kind of environment, you're also sharing then experiences. You're experiencing and also sharing knowledge between the project team members. Because you're dealing with an, an element of the product that is complex. Remember what I was saying before, go back to even how we created those vaccines. The scientists created those vaccines with COVID-19. We try to become in innovative. We try to think outside the box. That's the only way to behave like a complex and adaptive system. And the only way to do that is by then sharing then those that, that knowledge, allowing then as a project manager, your team members, the ability to perhaps even experiment, to test, to try out perhaps some type of innovative new ideas to perhaps try to improve the condition of the project in the face of coping com with complexity. I had recently the opportunity to also uh, become certified in training future project management professionals in being coming certified in our new Pinbox 7. And one of the, the, uh, the, the themes that was evident to me uh, from the, the training, and it's also replete in, in Pinbox 7, is that this idea about creating a collaborative and learning type of a working environment for your project team members, it is definitely mentioned and supported throughout Pinbox 7. So there's a definitely an alignment between what my doctoral research was finding and what was indicated from the results, but they're also aligned then with Pinbox 7 itself. Matter of fact, one of the uh, the principles with Pinbox 7 actually it takes a little bit of a different perspective. It builds then instead of looking at it into knowledge areas, it now looks at it in terms of 12 principles. And one of those principles in Pinbox 7 is actually complexity. But it also emphasizes as well then in other parts, managing your project team, building your project team, forming your project team environment, that you as a project manager must use those project manager competencies. Some of those others that are that are indicated in Pinbox 7, active listening. Again, trying to understand what your uh, the message is that's being received from your um, receiver of your message rather than trying to already think about what you're going to say in response to that message. A clear skill of communication, social awareness, having the ability to actually sense not just the the uh, the situation, the project situation, but also then the perhaps the emotional state, the mood of your project team members. Trying to sense also where there are, there's a sense of uncertainty, maybe in your project team members, giving guidance and direction to help them in addressing that. Those are all parts of the social awareness. And again, they're emphasized in Pinbox 7. And certainly to build relationships, both with your team members, your primary stakeholders, and even some of your secondary stakeholders in the project. What's also happening is that 
you're building an environment that is built on trust. And what trust was one of those elements that I continue to see in my research and in my understanding of how we as projects, project team members, project managers, how we can begin to behave as a complex adaptive system is based on this element of trust as well. And we can achieve realizing that possibly that that potential that's available to us and also establish this environment of trust by building our strengths in project manager competencies. And this is what I, I like to, to, to coin or, or talk about as describing the 21st century project manager. Where the, the project manager, certainly it, there's not a departure from what we've seen traditionally in the field of project management uh, with uh, managing your budget, managing your schedule, managing the quality of the project, managing your stakeholders. Those are still very relevant in the field of project management and in being an effective project manager, but they now must be integrated into what I talk about as some of those soft skills, the interpersonal skills. That's going to lead then to some of these benefits, creativity, adaptability, improved ingenuity, and also improved problem solving as well. That's how we can begin to manage the edge of chaos. So I'm going to Ashley, hang on a second here. Let me go back out to this. Yeah, so, okay, I should be back now. <laughs> I'm going to turn it back over, um, and I believe we're going to have then Professor Ella, who's going to just give some personal insight and experiences also in her, her experiences with managing complexity. Thank you, John. That was fantastic. Could you please uh, stop sharing your screen? Then we'll... Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you again. Um, I had some questions, but uh, we're short in time. If we get some time, I will get back to you and ask my questions. So let's move to our uh, next presenter, um, Ella Ponsford Galacci. Ella is a passionate educator in the fields of information technology and project management. Professor Ponsford Galachi is a full-time corporate faculty in the Master of Science in Project Management program at Hersberg University of Science and Technology. Ms. Ponsford Galachi has spent over 20 years as, as a project management and IT management uh, practitioner before entering academia. As a director for a nonprofit professional education institution, she led transformational projects involving business process design software development, infrastructure design and implementation, and uh, facilities management. Seven years ago, she felt a tug towards teaching and followed it. She teaches several courses in the project management program, and she has taught ITIS courses at both the undergrad and grad levels. Professor Ponsford Galacci received a BS degree in business management and economics, with a specialization in business and information technology, an advanced master certificate in project management and a master of business administration in management from SUNY Empire State College and the School for Graduate Studies. She is currently pursuing a doctoral degree in information technology, a specialization in project management, which expects to complete in 2023. Her research interests include project manager competencies, risk in complex projects, and enterprise architecture and governance. Professor Ponsford Galachi is a certified project management professional PMP. Please, Professor Ponsford Galachi. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. I will make this brief because I know that you would like to ask some questions. Uh, I don't have a formal presentation. I thought it might be interesting uh, given that uh, Dr. Clark and I both attend Capella University pursuing our doctorates, to give you a little bit of uh, stories, if you will, from the front lines and how the research that we do affects the practitioners in uh, that are actually doing the work. 
Uh, Dr. Clark mentioned uh, September 11th, 2001. And I think that September 11th, 2001 changed not only the way in which project managers managed teams, managed their projects, but it also changed the way we looked at uncertainty. Because there are uncertainties that are around us today, such as COVID-19 and such as the effects of the war in Ukraine, that none of us would actually think about or think to think about. We call them unknown unknowns. Um, but there was this September, beautiful September morning. Um, I lived in New York, New York State at the time. I lived in a suburb of uh, New York City, uh, which everybody knows as Long Island. And I was taking my usual train, commuter train, into New York City where I worked. Uh, I worked for a company in um, the uh, seminar business, continuing education. And we were uh, in the middle of and really bearing down on the end of a multi-million dollar total systems transformation project. We were transforming every every uh, system that we had in the organization, including business processes and the way we managed our customer relations, the way we managed inventory, the way we managed processing orders. Everything was going, everything was changing. This now 2001 was the year that uh, Beadle and Company presented everyone with the uh, Agile Manifesto. Now that hadn't been, Agile was something that had been talked about, but hadn't actually been implemented that much. So we were doing a complete predictive style project, waterfall. Everything had been planned. Schedules had been planned. Costs had been assessed and man and, and uh, cost management plans produced. And we had a uh, stakeholder management, which was not part of the PIMBOK at the time, actually. Uh, but we were very careful about our communications and we had a really good team that was melding very well together from the top of the organization, from the president himself, all the way down to the folks in the mail room who were going to help process and pick and pack orders and get them out to customers. But that changed. That changed and I, I saw it change when the conductor on the train came over to a bunch of us and said, hey, look out the window. It looks like a small plane hit the World Trade Center. So, of course, everybody was shocked. We thought a small plane. Wow, what could that happen? Well, by the time I got to work, we knew that it was more than just a small plane hitting the World Trade Center. We knew that something major had happened and that it was going to change everything. After the first few days, when we returned to the office and we began to assess what was going to happen to the project, we realized that our revenue was going to take a, a real beating because people didn't want to come to seminars. First of all, budgets, when you, when you look at the budget, the first thing that goes usually is, is uh, anything that has to do with uh, training. So people didn't want to come out to seminars. Everyone was refocusing themselves on the core mission of their businesses. Everyone was trying to address the changes that were going to come because of what had happened to us. So the, the president of the company pulled away my stakeholders, 
that had been working with so closely with us and we're, we were doing a really good job of working together. And he looked at my boss, who was one of the steering committee members, and he said, OK. You guys figure it out. I need my people back. I need them focused on business. But I still need you to get the system up and running. So we adapted. We became that adaptive system that Dr. Clark mentioned. I pulled my team together, which was the technical staff. We, in conjunction with the consulting firm that was working with us to build the system, restructured plans. We, uh, this is something we talk about in the program. When do you make the decision that there's a go or a no go on a project? When do you decide that you must cut back on certain of the uh, qualities that you want in the product? When do you do that? Well, 9-11 was one of those times when we all regrouped and had to take a step back and say to ourselves, OK, how are we going to do this? Well, we worked again together. But this time it was just a smaller team. We employed communications management in that we asked for the establishment of a committee of stakeholders, which we ended up calling the steering committee. Um, but they weren't really a steering committee, but they were a good group of people that headed up every division in the organization. So every one of them was a management decision maker. Very important to keeping a project going forward, to keeping a project moving towards achieving its goals and objectives, regardless of uh, what happens around you. What happens in that outside macro environment around you that you have no control over uh, or you have very little control over in some cases. So we pulled together, we adapted, we became a system unto ourselves. We reported back to the president of the company and to the steering committee. We got some direction. We held fast to our change management process and policy that we had established, which is critical for any project that you do, whether it's an IT project or a business project, have that way for your project to adapt by implementing a change management system that has very clear steps. Again, communication. Uh, chaos occurs sometimes when it doesn't need to because we are given tools to work with, such as communications and clarity, and we don't use them. So that story actually did have somewhat of a, I would say, a neat ending in the sense that we finished our project, we hit most of the goals and objectives, and I had what construction teams call a punch list at the end of it uh, of things that still needed to be done. But we got the minimum required uh, systems up and running. There was room to grow. There was always room to grow. Um, so my lessons learned from that situation is that if you have a strong relationship with your stakeholders, if you have a strong team, you can pretty much weather any major situation that comes at you. Another important point is having the tools and knowing how to use them. Tools are changing. 
we don't we won't in the future be managing projects so much as we will be um we'll be living them okay and i know that sounds a little weird but what i what i mean to say is that project management is often thought of in terms of a methodology such as agile or waterfall but those things are no longer going to be front and center what's going to be front and center is value what value will you as a project manager be able to bring to your organization? How can you convince your organization that it is appropriate for you to be a part of a project management community? You have to show them where the value is. And for us, the value was completing our project on time, on time with the adjusted schedule, let's put it that way. On time with the adjusted schedule, within the adjusted scope, and still a little bit under budget. Just enough under budget to throw a bunch, to throw a party for a bunch of really tired project team members. So I was going to tell you another story, but I'm looking at the time and I'm sure that uh, you have some questions. So I'm going to throw this back to my colleague, um, Ruzba. Yep, thank you. Wonderful. That was thank great to have such, such a great thank example. You. That was very helpful. Thank you. Thank I think you. It clarifies it perfectly. So uh, in the audience, does anybody have any questions? If you do have any questions, feel free to type it in the chat box. And while we're waiting, um, I have a quick question from either of you, if if you would like to answer to it. Um, I remember I was reading a paper about how COVID-19 has changed the way, um, it has changing, is changing the working culture. And we have seen it all around us. I mean, working from home to mm -hmm. be more specific. Based on what you said, based on your presentation, I can imagine that this is going to be one of the manager's concerns, um, mm -hmm. how the team are going to be productive uh, using this method of working, which is getting more and more attention. Uh, based on your presentation, your great, wonderful presentation and your experience, do you think it's going to be one of the examples of managing on the edge of chaos based on what you said? And if, tr if that's true, then uh, what is your suggestion or advice or solution for the managers to deal with these uh, new culture of working? John? Is that uh, to me? Is it to me? <laughs> I also want to sure. Is it... Yeah, either of you. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah, John. Yeah. I'll, right. I'll tag on afterwards. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it's interesting that you bring this up. Uh, I was just talking a little bit about this uh, just the other day as well. Uh, a couple, couple of things are going to my mind here. P first of all, the, the the what what I've seen, and there's some literature now to support this as well, is that employees have gotten used to the fact of working virtually, or even working from from home. All right, so there's already here we go again, just like I was saying earlier tonight, tensions are starting to build now between the employer and also the employees. The employer obviously wants to have the employees come back. They're still under the old mindset, uh, a traditional way of looking at the, the work, even the, at looking from a nine to five perspective. And I think that uh, the employees are seeing, wait a minute, I can accomplish the work just as well. And in some cases, maybe even better by giving me the flexibility to do it from my house or from wherever I have the ability then to to uh, to do the work. You just uh, all I need essentially is just a computer and my internet connection. So the, the, this idea about managing the edge of chaos, I, I think that the employees are already there. They're already pushing towards that. And the employers, I think those that are going to be uh, sustainable, they're going to be resilient in the future are going to be those that are going to to also adopt more of that flexibility as well. And as part of that, 
I also think that part of that's going to be that just some of the same things I even mentioned tonight uh, with with trust. In the environment remotely because of the we have this option. What's important is that we build in that trust. The employer has to have then trust in its employees. And I also think there's another element that's at play here as well. Uh, I, I have the experience also and also the opportunity to teach people from the uh, uh, really from the the the, uh, the generation Z uh, now. These are the younger uh, generation people that they're expecting the, to have this kind of flexibility. They're also looking to have then this this sense of then self reliance, where you just tell me how to get to the information, where to learn, give me the environment and the freedom to learn as well, and also give me the freedom to then to try things out and to test things out, to learn and adapt from that. So they're ahead of the game, in my opinion, as well. And so I think that there are two issues that are happening here <clears throat> with the, the tensions. One with this idea about workers wanting to come to not come back. They want to be able then to still work remotely. And I think that there's a generation that is continuing to increase in the presence of the workforce. They are also expecting to have that as just a normal way of how to work and how to then how to operate in the uh, in the organization of, of tomorrow. So those are two things that come to my mind uh, right off the bat. Yeah, yep, sounds great. Yeah, <laughs> great explanation. <laughs> um, so we have a we have a question in the chat too, um, and I think I'll answer to one of the questions. Uh, the question is that project management skills would apply not only for actual project managers. Uh, we could all benefit from this mindset. Mm -hmm. And then the next question is, could you talk briefly about the opportunities that HU offers in project management, master and courses? So uh, absolutely. Uh, you want you want to answer? you want me to take this one? Sure. 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 Uh, I, I actually I do have did... one thing to say as well for the for, for the first question, but do, go ahead. You talk first. No, I already <laughs> answered the first question, so please jump on in. <laughs> I mean, I so, I saw that and I had to say that because if if anything, I am what you'd call a project management evangelist. I believe the project yeah. management is something that is needed not just in business, but even in um you know, in, in churches, in uh, any community things that we do, we can we can find a way to incorporate project management. And it's not just about information technology, but anything, finance, marketing, uh, making a movie, uh, a theater production is a project. So yes, I think that that mindset is wonderful for people who you know, who really want to get it done and want to work, get the work done. I'll now I will. So, I'll yield the floor no, so to John. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's interesting. This is a very interesting question. Um, it, it, I, I've been working with uh, some of my other colleagues at Herzog University where we we started to we, we actually wrote a couple of articles last year. Uh, looking at the principles that were outlined actually in Pinbox 7 and how can those be then applied at that time we were writing about it from a enterprise architecture perspective so it was that IT type of a, of a, of a slant but what was actually I think more interesting is that we started then to talk about wait a minute could we actually start to apply these principles of project management in the field that we're doing <laughs> being teachers, being professors at, at, at a university. And that's what we're starting to look into right now. That's, that's one of the things we're looking into. Uh, and, and I think that part of why, what I suspect we're going to start to do is also look at it from the student's perspective. What were they expecting from, from us, the, the professors? And I have a, a, a feeling that there's gonna be a, a synergy 
between then what the students are, are looking for in their professors and also then these principles that are outlined even in Pinbox 7 for that for that matter. Some of the same things we're even talking about tonight. Strong communication. Providing guidance, creating an environment of learning, creating an environment of adaptability as well. So these are certain types of concepts that I am beginning to realize are uh, they they are uh, they trans trans uh, transfer over multiple types of disciplines and then multiple types of of areas, even to the point where you could even start to take some of these concepts and think about how they can be applied even into our everyday normal lives as well. So that's that's the first thing. And then the second part, I, I'm not the expert in what's offered at Harris University, but I will tell you that at Harris University, we do offer um, both a master's degree in project management. There is uh, the option also for uh, getting an agile type of a specialization. And we also then offer the option for getting a certificate in project management as well. Uh, we're in the process also, uh, I'm going to be one of the people involved in this, to begin to train uh, potential, potentially new project management prof uh, professionals in preparing to take the, the PMP examination in Pinbox 7. That's going to be starting up pretty soon. Uh, I'll probably be actually teaching my first course in that sometime in the summer. Uh, so, so there, there are some areas in which we're we're certainly continuing to emphasize uh, project management, and and again, not not to uh, sound very uh, boastful here, but w we've been ranked actually, if not the top, near the top in terms of being the best project management uh, program from an online type of a platform in the country. So there, there are particular, uh, I think, um, t particular types of, of, uh, of not just with uh, application, but also the understanding of the field of project management that can be offered through the courses through Harvard University. And I really do truly believe that um, uh, as well. So uh, the answer to the, the, the question uh, uh, from it looks like Mortiz, uh, if anything, I would love to talk to you or even point you in the right direction to talk to some other people at Harrison University uh, to begin more familiarizing with the courses. Uh, and, and I do know that we are intending to actually have courses even taught in Latin America. Uh, the the uh, we we were actually all ready <laughs> to send some people down <laughs> over for the uh, for the uh, I think for the spring semester. So there. There's some people that are already positioned and ready to go if we need to, and there's certainly demand for that as well and the need for that. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. That was a great explanation, complete explanation. Um, and then a, a comment, not a question, that um, I think project management should be taught as core curriculum in all bachelor degrees. We need to learn early. And I think that's <laughs> really, yes. absolutely, absolutely yeah. agree. I really, <laughs> I do. Um, yeah. And I know John does as well. It would be a good idea, I think, to have a project management course at the very beginning of a bachelor's program. Um, I am not familiar with the education structure in uh, Panama, but in the US, we have a tendency to uh, graduate our seniors from high school and they come into uh, a university or a college environment and they're wholly unprepared for the change that occurs. Uh, I would like to see pro a project management or a project management type of class uh, presented as one of the first uh, courses that they take in any bachelor's program, because it's not only a value to you in your uh, future career, it will be a value to you in your university career as well, because you'll learn the tools and techniques to manage your degree program as if it were a pro as if it were a project. Okay, with that, thank you again, John and Ella, for your great inspirational talk. That was wonderful. Thank you for the invitation. I enjoyed it a lot, and I hope that uh, audience also enjoyed it a lot. Thank um, you.
Thank you. A special thanks to Dr. Kevin Huggins, who is director of HU LADAM, and I'm glad that he was here with us too today. Uh, if you like these sessions, don't forget that it's going to be repeated every month. Next month topic is going to be uh, the usage of technology in environment, environmental science. Uh, mm -hmm. Please uh, feel free to be in touch with either of us, Kevin, me, or the presenters if you have any questions or any follow-up discussions. Thank you again, everyone, for attending the sessions and hope in this session and hope to see you again in our future sessions. Thank you, everyone, and good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, everyone.